a bit, I will show images of Dandy Walker malformation, which is the most common malformation of the posterior fossa according to the textbooks. The incidence is about 1 in 25,000, indicating how uncommon posterior fossa malformations are. In Dandy Walker malformation, there is a large cyst in the posterior fossa with a small vermis that has been rotated counterclockwise and lifted upwards. There's an abnormal high position of the confluence of the venous sinuses, the torcular, which is above the level of the lamboid suture, hence the name torcular lamboid inversion. On post-contrast images, you can also look at the position of the choroid plexus, which is absent or displaced laterally in Dandy Walker malformation. This is a brief recap of the development of the posterior fossa, as discussed in more detail two vlogs ago. The roof of the rhomb encephalon gets divided by the primitive choroid plexus in an anterior membranous area and a posterior membranous area. The anterior membranous area gets covered by the developing cerebellum. The primitive choroid plexus produces CSF, causing outpouching of the posterior membranous area named Blake's pouch. And at some point in time, this pouch perforates to form the median aperture. This is also the normal development. Two schematic drawings and histologic specimens at the same time points where you can see how the developing cerebellum progressively covers the anterior membranous area, growing from the rhombic lips. And the same group also published an article in 2021, where they compared the normal development with Dandy Walker. And there is a problem with the rhombic lip in Dandy Walker malformation. So they looked at mid-sagittal cerebellar images with the posterior, middle and anterior lobules marked with blue, white and red dots and there was especially a problem with the posterior firmus. And because of the abnormal covering of the anterior membranous area, there's outpouching in the incompletely covered anterior membranous area instead of the posterior membranous area. And then the entire fourth ventricle enlarges, so the cyst you see is actually the enlarged fourth ventricle with imperforated foramen of Majendi and Lushka on both sides. Then the Walker malformation can be detected on intrauterine MRI. This is normal 26 gestational weeks and this is then the Walker malformation. And if you would measure the height of the firmus, you might be misled because of partial volume. So that's not useful, but you can look at the angle between the firmus and the tegmentum which is increased because of the cyst in the posterior fossa. And the problem with Dandy Walker malformation is that there's no internalization of the rhombic lip. And on coronal images, you can also see the hypoplasia of the cerebellum. If you want to make a prognosis for a patient with Dandy Walker malformation, you can look at the lobulation of the vermis because this corresponds with the intellectual prognosis. Thanks for watching and until next time when we will continue with Blake's pouch cyst.